Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can use audio source to control sound within your game. So I just have a nice little scene with a skybox and two objects which each have uh, two little audio clips. Uh, nothing is ticked here in either of them so it's not going to play on awake and it's not going to loop. So we're going to control everything we can using scripts, specifically C Sharp. So right click, create. C sharp script and again we use C sharp specifically because that's all you really can do now without going legacy so we'll go audio control so in this we're going to open up in visual studio and we're going to have just two variables for now which is each going to be those two uh, variables the uh, audio sources so we'll start with public audio source which is how you can uh, tell the script that this is audio not a game object but you still attach a game object so public audio source bell sound semicolon and public audio source and beat sound semicolon so best way to do this I'm going to set up some quick little buttons to actually help us do different things within a game so let's start by going public void and we'll call this one loop bell open close bracket and open curly bracket and all we'd need to do is bell sound dot loop equals true and after this bell sound dot play open close bracket save that script so you can see that all we're doing is referencing that particular part of the audio source and changing the loop sound. So if, for example, we were to have a button, a game object, UI, and button. That's a nice little button there. It just says button, but we'll keep it as just saying button. And game object, create empty, because we need to attach that script onto the object to be able to control the variables. So we'll add beat audio and bell audio. Now, all we need to do here is we know how to use buttons. If you don't know how buttons quite work, I do have a couple of tutorials on how to use them, but all I'm doing is attaching that loop bell to the button. So for example, just to show how this works, I'm going to take out that loop sound. So all this will do now when we press the button is play the audio, which is the bell. Nice and simple. So to get around that and make it loop, we would just basically use that line of code. And I'm going to actually click on Bell Audio so we can see it change in the inspector panel. So keep an eye out on this little box here. So there we go. And it's ticked us loop, so it will loop continuously. That's exactly what we want to do. So that's how you can control the loop. Now, next thing we're going to do is let's take a look at uh, pausing an actual sound. And a good way of pausing a sound is, for example, if you create a pause menu. So let's go public void pause audio, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And let's do this with the beat. So beat sound dot uh, play semicolon and what we'll do is we'll start playing it but then after a second we'll make it stop but obviously to do that we need to control time so we need an i enumerator but the whole principle can be used uh, just to pause if you would want it to be so i enumerator run audio oh, close bracket up curly bracket and let's wait for a second so yield return new wait for seconds and we'll in fact we'll wait for two seconds before we pause it so then after two seconds we'll go beat sound dot pause and save so back into unity and let's reassign this button to work with that line so we change here audio control and we go pause audio but we also need to start that coroutine. So start coroutine and it's run audio. 
semicolon and save. So now what's going to happen is it will play the audio and it will instantly start this. So we'll wait for two seconds and then it will pause the audio. So if we press play and let's click on beat audio so we can see any changes here. I'm not sure if we'll see anything, but. And there we go, it's paused. And let's also, let's in fact, let's wait for another two seconds and then do the inverse. So beat sound dot on pause. I think it's as simple as that and save. Uh, have I, I think I've mistyped that, haven't I? There we go. Open close bracket at the end. It would help with the parentheses. Okay, so now what will happen when we press play is it will play for two seconds, pause for two seconds, and then carry on playing. There we go. So it's not as though it's actually stopping. So what you could do is instead of beat sound, you could actually have stop rather than pause again. And then obviously to start it again, play and save and it would start the whole process over again so if for example like say you want to pause a game you would just use pause on the audio source and it stopped and starts the game so as i say with audio source it's very much possible to control it in many many different ways and there is you know a way of actually going into it and for example let's have a look at beat sound dot and then you can see everything here which you're able to actually take a look at and that is the fantastic thing about uh, in this case visual studio you're able to see just what you can actually access and if you think mm, something is a little bit off you could always have a little search but you could use things like mute so if we save that It's not going to quite work, I don't think. Uh, but either way, we can do various things within Unity to actually give us the ability to uh, change. I can't remember what the actual mute one is. But either way, you can still reference it through the script, and it will still reference anything here. Uh, oh, it's got an error. OK, fine. Uh, so if we have beat sound dot, let's take a look at um something real quick well there's unpause right there but you know just go through here and you can see uh, whatever you need to take a look at and generally the only things you'll ever really need to use uh with audio source are things like loop things like play uh, muting it stopping playing unpause all that kind of thing it gives you the ability to control here and a lot of people don't quite get how audio source works but overall Declaring it as a variable up here will give you the ability to only reference the audio source on any game object. So as you can see here, even though this is a game object we dragged over, it will always reference the audio source within it. So guys, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight to how audio source works via scripting, and I hope it helps you in your game. So thank you very much for watching.